Um, but yeah, the general idea was that we wanted somewhere else to keep the manipulated data, so we weren't overriding the original image that we loaded. This kind of like weird drawing program. <laughs> Future cyber villain. Yeah, you have the smile to them, but you need the hard plastic. Camera is like face. covering face, but still so the trying to also the find it. Yeah. Ah, okay. so, uh, Which one? Yeah. Pull the camera down a second, after, like when you, it's in the okay. direction, then it. Yeah. Can you move a little bit? Yeah. It only works when it's in a straight head. In the depth image, it's not, it's not quite the same, right? So, color image is slightly bigger than the depth image. Um, and, uh, but the nice thing is they have a mapping. I don't know how it works. I mean, Microsoft has a function. I don't know if it, this works in open frameworks. We'll figure this out in a second. There's a mapping between the pixels from the depth camera and the color camera, so you can you can map them onto each other. That is true. In the code. What does it say? No, no, no. Like, what did it change from true to? So it should be. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just like this. Okay. It's a selfie where if you if you take the selfie, you disappear. <laughs> so. Um, Somebody asked about facial recognition. Now at this point, when you can localize the features, then you can begin to look at recognizing. But they're two very distinct processes that are often um, misrepresented in journalism. That face detection is a specialized form of object detection, where face recognition is a biometric algorithm for human identification. Now when it's in the face region, it's asking a lot of questions and the computational time to process that is actually a lot higher. This is slowed down, I don't know, thousands of times so that you can watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit similar to how many people do you guys use Photoshop? So in Photoshop, when you open up levels, uh, you can see a histogram. Each of the boxes corresponds to one of the five face detection profiles. And the one on the lower right, that's the profile face detector. But for some reason, the profile um, figured out that that area is probably a face. I'll show you how it work is what we took the bounding box. Mm -hmm. Cool. Find such a clarity upper half. Um, and that other stuff will come in useful for other parts of this, but currently, um, hmm? I'm just trying to figure out what I need to create uh, or no, where. So can you can you go, can you run it again? That's the basically would be this point. Yeah. So what it, it's part of, and then the center of that. So it's tracking okay. the center of the. Oh, okay. So you're the, saying I don't even need the. AR tracking. Yeah, probably, but no, cause... I still want to use that for Okay. Because that can still come in useful if I want to use that to add other things to. If there's just one person um, in, or one blob in the scene, or just the largest one, then uh, insert the threshold to connect to a certain area, then it should be, um, should be somewhere in here. It's um, pretty, pretty close. And if you do have the tracker, then you can say, is the tracker position in the in which wall is the tracker position? Yeah, that's the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, I did so so it has to have Can you explain, sir? So the mouse center. Uh, um, <laughs> 
it's not, no, 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 Yeah. Oh no. That hand looks sick. Yeah, no shit. Please tell me when you're done so I can stop. <laughs> So this one will get you pixelated if you move and if you feel it, yeah. it gets all pixelated. And also black and white or something? Uh, yeah, also black and white just to have a little bit of a contrast and make it clearer. Nice. 
That looks amazing. It is.
got could be possible by an amateur in a week. Uh, uh, training the software to recognize the faces. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, 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 Suppose it has a benefit that maybe that's the scary part about it, and then you should be conscious about what technology you're also participating in yourself. And yourself, have, you have a, a choice in yeah, because you can also track changes into your appearance, right? Because if you follow people around, you want to place webcams around to your position, follow you around, and also check which video you are, where you are, which work you might like the most, uh, which one you like to use, if you drink beer a lot, or if you just hang I posted with if this place will be in bed, the face of course will change, but like, you will yeah, have the face. Yes. Yeah. But the problem is around 2012 when things started to shift for now, but you think so you think this, but they it looks really solid. Basically, they wanted to make it so that people can monetize artworks, so I think they can run ads over their songs and all these things. And the label negotiations to do that, like they were so big that they were going to sue us, right? And it basically just gives some play rates. And they find it for like three years to get all those things.
it's really cool. <laughs> Fun is that you can fly down there and uh, throw with your hand. There is also a cloud controller where you can turn on if you are drawing a cloud or you can erase the cloud or you can just make a whole black new sky. And uh, you're just flying and drawing and there you can see the projection. So summer 2014, and um, the idea was to create a four-week program where people can have an intensive learning experience. Because myself, I've already taken a ton of workshops that are one day or like once a week or something, two weeks or something, and I never actually learn. So I always have to relearn all the time, and I was kind of tired of having to do that myself. So I thought. It make um, like I don't know. I thought of the idea of creating something that's more intensive, so that people can actually learn and then leave with new skills that they're actually going to use and continue, and continue to use, and not just like once the workshop's over, they're done. But the topic I was teaching in this workshop was about computer vision and interactivity. Um, so computer vision has been a a method a lot of artists and designers use to add interactivity to works um, for quite some time now and it's something I use a lot in my own artworks. Uh, so the course was on the one hand teaching some of these methods that are used in more creative projects and then also looking at some you know of the contemporary discourse about surveillance and how computers see and then how they can analyze images um, which is also I think an interesting topic that a lot of artists are working on. So. During the course, we did a lot of, um, we worked with open frameworks to look at different um, toolkits for getting information from a camera, uh, looking at motion detection, using a connect to, to track people, um, and other ways of working with uh, image processing. I also want to say Chris is awesome, like she's always quite the, the favorite teacher and so I uh, enjoy whenever she has like a break in her regular schedule of teaching at Parsons Paris <laughs> to <laughs> share her knowledge with the rest of the world. Well, yeah. the School of Ma is awesome because Rachel does such a good job organizing it. And so I've been, this is my third year doing it so obviously I've had a great time. They're always a good group of, of people. Christiane Ferenix was teaching how to use the Raspberry Pi and some command line and some beginning open, beginning open frameworks and Mo Seeger was here and he was teaching also a bit of open frameworks and, alongside Chris and uh, Adam Harvey came in to talk about his work with computer vision and uh, surveillance and Gene Kogan came in the last week to uh, share a little bit about what he's doing with um, machine learning. And we had a great time. It was a pretty successful workshop. I was really pleased that the students worked really hard. Everyone came out with like a really amazing project in just a week. Um, and I feel like everyone learned a lot and so they can take their skills and continue working. Yeah, I think, well, I'm kind of excited about the idea that some a lot of the students are living in Berlin, so then we're going to continue to learn together uh, how to use open frameworks, which I know is going to be painful. It's painful when you're trying to do it on your own, so at least it lessens the pain when you have a group of people that you really uh, care about, get along with, and want to keep learning together. So I'm excited, actually, about the potentials now for what we're going to do in the future with the new great things we learned. 
from the instructors and the program, all of them, and especially Chris. Basically half and half. <laughs> no, but there was more women 60, than men. 40, yeah, more women than men, actually. Yeah. But also a really international kind of um, group, right? Yeah, I think for representing 11 countries. I think it was really interesting to see the different struggles that people had. For example, like the creative people are always struggling to feel like they know enough about the technology and the tech people are struggling to feel like they're creative enough to do something that they can show other people and have it considered art. So it's just, it's really interesting. I mean, especially in a four-week intensive thing, then you get a lot of um, like few people's fears come out and also too like that in the end you know when you're trying to make your own thing you, you're exhausted and emotional and like maybe I'm just speaking for myself <laughs> but uh, it's, it's really interesting yeah but then and it's so great then when you already have the community then you kind of built it up and then so then it's just like it's like almost like that's what it is it's like you create a program and the first weeks are building the community so that you can support each other as you struggle to create something that you care about in the end.